choose this place. Your choice. God made you and loves you. There's never been another like you. He deemed that you would come here. He asked you and you came. Today, you came. You had the courage to come. And there was plenty parts of the world that pulled you from today from even coming, but you came. Don't you know how much God will remember this? Do you think he is a, a God that's just sitting there waiting to toss you off? You are perfect. There is no one else like you. And without you, he would cry. So he's coming to you now. Right now, in this moment. All he has to hear from you is yes. Yes, you've accepted Jesus, some of you. Keep accepting him. Every time we sin, we deny him. Be holy. Be perfect just as my father is perfect. Or in the passion. My commandment to you is this. You love one another just as I have loved you. And if that doesn't grab you, maybe this one will. Your name may not appear down here in this world's hall of fame. In fact, you may be so unknown that no one knows your name. The Oscars and the praise of men may never come your way, but don't forget God has rewards that he'll hand out someday. This crowd on earth, they will soon forget when you're not at the top. They will cheer like mad until you fall, and then their praise will stop. Not God, he never does forget, and in his hall of fame, by just believing on his son, forever there's your name. I tell you, friend, I wouldn't trade my name, however small. It's written there beyond the stars in that celestial hall. For all the famous names on earth, or the glory that they share, I'd rather be an unknown here and have my name up there. God bless you. So welcome, my friend. How are you? Good. Thank you very much. We, um, you know, started out with just, I remember when Mel Gibson first met with me and started talking about uh, doing it in Aramaic, Hebrew, Latin. Yeah. I thought he probably picked the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah. How did he find you? How, how were you chosen to play this important role? He uh, saw the thin red line. Uh, a movie I did with Terrence Malick, mm -hmm. and uh, he was, Steve McAvity told me actually that he was on his airplane and he, he says, here, I think I found the guy to play. There might be one American, and he says, it's Jim Caviezel guy. So mm -hmm. when they met with me originally, it was, uh, he wasn't there, it was Steve McAvity, and it was on a surfing movie. That was a front. Yeah. And about 40 minutes into it, he shows up, next day he calls me at home, and he's, he's trying to talk me out of the movie. Yeah. And I said, look, man, I already said I'd do it. He says, but you never, you might not work again. Wow. And uh, that's when I said, oh, my God. I said, what? I said, I just realized my initials are JC and I'm 33 years old. And he says, yeah, you're freaking me out. And he hung <laughs> up the phone and yeah. that's all, how it all began. Did you realize at the time that this was going to have such a spiritual impact and be such an important movie to Christians? Yes, because it wasn't going to be watered down. Right. And that's the only reason why I said, well, what's the problem here? Uh, once I saw the controversy, which was in, you know, the, the, the scripture is just loaded with controversy, and and uh, and, and uh, not much has changed in 2,000 years. So right. I looked at this thing and I said, well, no, we gotta gotta do it. And I was, I did feel uh, a bit of fear, mm -hmm. but um, but I also felt like you know this is what you were called to do. You've mm -hmm. got to make this movie. And look, man, regardless if I'm making the passion or anything, I've always been drawn to the truth. And mm. there could be, out of 100 Christians, 99 that are false. But right. that one would have bugged me. It would have been a thorn at my side. Right. And so I turned and faced it. Right. You had said many times that you wanted 
people to not see you, but the Christ that lives in you come through. Do, do you think you accomplished that? Well, first of all, if you're an actor, and if you're a real one, if you're a celebrity actor, you want them to see you. Mm -hmm. If you're a real actor, you want them to see the character you're playing. Yeah. And uh, no different there. I, I wanted people to be moved profoundly. I wanted to take myself out of the picture, and I just wanted the Jesus to use me as a vehicle. Good. And um, I think that when I watch it, I have the same reaction. I, I just weep like a baby. Yeah. So I take myself out and I feel like I'm watching him. How did you prepare for this role? <sighs> okay, like every film, you know, you read the script okay. and then you go to the, the real script, which is the Bible. Mm -hmm. I read it more than I had ever read it before. This one was, now I got to sink or swim on this. So yeah. I had prayer, big time. Mm -hmm. the, lots of people's prayers. Once it got out that we were doing this movie, mm -hmm. the huge controversy just from, you know, the core of, uh, which was not going to be, uh, you're not going to, um, um, you know, it's not going to make the screen. Mel had to bear the entire burden, put up all his money. That's right. Then he, nobody would take it, and the studios would. Then he went to them again and said, look, we you distribute it? Nobody would distribute the film. So he put up all his money again, and literally it was um, flip the coin heads. We win, tails they win. That's right. You know, if I was the devil, yeah. I would do everything I could to stop this movie from happening. Amen. And That's I would good. come after him, and I'd say, you're a failure. You're not going to make it. You'll never work mm -hmm. again. You're a bum. You're whatever. And, um, you know, and I felt God continually come to me. And it was that those little moments, and they were, they were... I think you can't have one and not the other. Right. You've got to suffer. If you don't suffer, what greatness is there in that? It's like an Olympic athlete who never suffered and got a gold medal. But the Bible says, greater is he that is in within us than he that is in the world. That's absolutely true. And, um, you know, that's when faith really matters. I yeah. mean, you know, I've got a thousand guys, you've got one guy. Right. Well, my faith tells me we're going to win. Yeah. What odds in, in in that? It's the one guy that goes against the Philistine and says, you're not going to talk to my God that way. Yeah. And I'm going to, you know, basically have the have the, have the the power of God go through you. That's what I needed in this. And I feel, especially right now, in modern times when man is so arrogant sure. because of technology and everything that they've got, it, it, it just press button. It's ridiculous. They don't pray. They don't. And this movie was as much of a warning to us yeah. as anything. I agree. And it's still having a huge impact. I know people had to have come up to you and given you stories of the way it impacted them or when it impacted a friend. What, what had you heard from people after they saw the film? How, how were they touched? Uh, it was a plethora of stories. Um, I think the biggest thing is and this kind of come off as a negative. Is I, I would go to these parties in the Oscar year mm -hmm. and Actors would come up to me and say, I saw the, the Passion of Christ. I didn't see that movie. Over and over and over again, they continued to say. They were very proud in they saying wow. that they didn't see it. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, you know, then you didn't see it. So why yeah. do you have to continue to tell me this? Yeah. Um, from that side. On the other side, you know, Paul, just from the stories you told me earlier. Right. Um, about the man with the, with the, with the baby that, that died and, and, and he had just seen it and, and been away for a long time and, and the child came alive again. Yeah. Um, I think the continual thing with me is that if you're a, a priest or a minister, you have your collar on. Right. I can't, they can take the collar off. I can't take my face off. Yeah. So if I'm walking down the street, they go, oh, look, you know, there's, there's Jim Caviezel. It's not that anymore. It's, look, there goes Jesus. Right. You represent that to, 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 to mankind. There's millions of prayer warriors out there. They're going to hold you up in prayer daily. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. A dead dog. And the Lord, He disciplines the ones He loves, Hebrews 12 says, and He comes in there with the rod, and He will break us of self. He'll break us and show us you can't rely on self. And the root of everything, it's a heart issue. The reason I was going to pornography was I was selfish. And the reason I was using, at a point, I'll be honest, 
I'll be honest, used to be a, a ministry where I would gain my joy from my performance. You see, you can make anything a God. You can make freedom from sexual sin a God. You can make anything a God. And that's what I had done. And so I challenge you guys out there, examine your hearts, because everything is a heart issue. It always goes back to the heart. And that's so important to realize because we must pursue the Lord. And as I've heard Brother Bob say, with no strings attached to the world, everything out of the way. And I hope this encourages you guys out there. And it, it blows my mind that God saved me and then allowed me to start out, be honest, and allowed it, you know, not to be a disaster. I was going in too much heresy. I remember when I got saved, I started getting into all this, you know, emergent stuff. And oh, I thank God. And he was faithful to me to, to bring me back to this book, to lead me away from men and to God. And that's praise the Lord for that. And the Lord saved me from pursuing freedom instead of Christ. And for 18 years of my life, I was totally hard and told the truth. I just slept in church. And then once I got enlightened that I need freedom, I pursued freedom and not Christ. And if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. But if it's the Son sets you free, it's not your own self. We must give up on our own power. Jeremiah 17, 5 says, Cursed is the man who makes flesh his strength, but blessed is the man whose trust is in the Lord. And I, I trust in the Lord to continue to sanctify me, to break me. I can't believe the, the, the work God has done the last years of breaking me of self. I mean, when I got saved, I, I felt like I had no struggles at all. And the Lord showed me, James, you got heart issue here, issue here, and things that I never thought were sins, the Lord was showing me. And you know, those who endure to the end will be saved. Those who endure in a love relationship with Jesus Christ, and He's so worthy of it, so pursue Him with all your heart, soul, and mind. Do not waste your life. If the Lord could save me, someone who played video games 15 hours a day, a slave of pornography. I was so shy I wouldn't talk to anyone. I would on the internet, I'd talk to people in audio chat, but in person I would put a mask on, I lived a totally false life. If God could save me and then use me to start a website like I'll be on it, use me to do anything at all, I mean that's just the grace of God. And I have no credit for anything that's happened. Everything goes right back to Him and that's I just want to encourage you guys, this is your one life. We're never going to live again. This life is going to end in a moment. Tomorrow's not granted. We don't know the hour the Lord's going to come. It's a vapor. It's blowing by so fast. Uh, the waterfall of the end of your life is coming so soon. And I tell you, be ready for the drop uh, into eternity. I don't fear death at all. I mean, death, you know, where's your sting? <laughs> I have the blood of Christ all over my account. I don't fear death. I fear God. And I need a, I need a greater fear of the Lord. I do, and I pray that by God's grace none of this is done in the flesh and that it will edify and encourage. And you know, I'm just a worm and a dead dog. I'm nothing at all. And I don't say that because I know I should. I say it because it's true. So please, if you're, listen, if you're dabbling in pornography, if you're still in sexual sin, if you're still falling into masturbation, put those things to death by the Spirit. And if it's not getting put to death, ask yourself, do you have the Spirit? You know, don't, don't, don't take Matthew 5.30 lightly. If, if it causes you to sin, it's going to drag you to hell. Whether that be, and some of you may be free of those things, and you got some freedom, but you, your God is a freedom and it's not Christ, and that will send you to hell. What are you boasting in? What am I boasting in? One thing, he who knew no sin became sin for me, that in him I can be made right with God. I, I am presentable before God for one reason, the blood of Christ. It's covered my account in full, and he died on behalf of, for me to cleanse me of every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for, that are going to be zealous for good works. And so I'm trying to do that. Oh, I need the Lord's help. I failed in many ways. But I tell you this, I always go back to him, and that's where the hope is found. My eyes are ever towards the Lord. He will pluck my feet out of the net. So praise, praise God. So be encouraged again, and Lord, help us to run. Only one life, as C.T. Studd said, and it'll soon be passed, and only what's done for Christ will last. And some want to be within the mile of a chapel bell. I want to run a rescue ship a yard from hell. And the Grace House, and I'll be honest, I guess it's my rescue ship for now. And the main thing I need to be rescued from is myself every day. Oh Lord, kill me, crucify me, take away all self. Let it all be for Christ and His glory. So let us press on, as Hosea 6.3 says, let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. So, amen.